Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. And this is our latest 2023-24 AZ104 exam preparation series with real exam questions and answers. Lot of Microsoft documentation, answer validation, and of course Azure concepts. Everything in this supercharged video. So let's get started. So let's begin the part 17 with question number 111, a very interesting question. And let me tell you my friends, similar kind of questions on the same pattern have appeared in the exam many times. So please pay full attention to this question. How I select the answer? What is the logic that I give? Please try to understand. I will try my best to explain the question in the best possible manner. But still in case you have some doubts or maybe you think the answer is not right, please let me know in the comment section. So let's read the question first. The question says that you have an Azure Active Directory tenant named Contoso.com that contains the users shown in the following table. So here you can see that we are given with this table. Let's understand this table first. The first column gives you the information about the users. And then in the second column, we have the type of the user whether the user is member or the guest and then in the third column we can see which group the user is member of so starting with the user one who is the type of member and then it's a member of group one similarly for the user two who is the type of guest and then it's a member of group one moving on we can see we have user three which is again of the type member but then the user three is not the member of any group then we have user A and this user is the member of group 2 and similarly for the user B who is the type of guest and it's a member of group 2. Now let's move on to the other part of the question. The question also tells you that the user 3 is the owner of group 1 and the group 2 is the member of group 1 and you configure an access review name review 1 which you can see here as shown in the following exhibit. So here you can see that we have an access review. The name of the review is review 1. The starting date is 2018-11-22 and with the frequency one time. Also, you can note the end date. You can also note what are the users to review. Here it says that the members of the group and also the scope is given which says guest users only. So in these kind of questions, there is a lot of information that you need to digest. So that's why I will present you how I attack these kind of questions. So starting with the group one, here you can see the user one, which you can also see here who is the member type and then we also have user 2 who is the guest type and user 3 is the owner which was given here in the question. Now let's move on to the group 2. In the group 2 we have user A who is the member and then user B who is the guest type. And also my friends with the other information given here you can also interpret or imply that the group 2 is part of group 1. And then finally in the question, we are also given with the information on this review one. So let's understand that this review one is a member of a group minus the guest user only that you can see here. It also tells you that the user two and the user B both are guest type and the group owner is user three. Okay, so now my friends, you can take the screenshot of all this information as we jump to the very first statement. Okay, so the first statement says that the user 3 can perform the access review of user 1. So you have to tell whether this statement holds true or not. So friends, based on the information that I just showed you, have you taken the screenshot? Please do that. I can tell you that this statement is not true and that's why no is the correct answer. The reason is very simple as you can see here that the user one is of type member. It's not a guest account and as we can see in the access review, it's only valid for guest users. So that's why no is the correct answer. Now let's move on to the next statement. The statement says that the user three can perform access review of user A. And once again, my friends, this is an incorrect statement. That's why no is the correct answer. And once again, as you can see, here that the user A like the user 1 is of type member that's why it's also not allowed to perform access review of user A. Now coming to the last statement the statement says that the user 3 can perform an access review of user B. So take a pause and let me know what do you think it's the right statement or not. Now let me reveal the answer and the correct answer is that this is a correct statement that's why yes is the correct answer. And the reason is as you can see here that the user B is a guest account and the access review is also specified for the guest account only. So that's why user 3 can perform the access review of user B. And friends, I would really encourage you to watch the previous part 16 as well. First four questions of the part 16 will also help you understand how the role of Azure global administrator and the owner role are different because many people really get confused between these two roles. So please do check out the previous part, part 16, first four questions. 
Now let's move on to the next question. Question number 112. The question says that you create an Azure storage account and you plan to add 10 blob containers to the storage account. Now friends, for one of the containers, you need to use a different key to encrypt data at rest. So what should you do before you create the container? Your options are option A, generate a shared access signature, which is also known as SAS. And then we have option B, modify the minimum TLS version. Option C, rotate the access keys. And lastly, option D, create an encryption scope. And the correct answer for this question is option D, create an encryption scope. And friends, this documentation will help you understand what are the encryption scope for the blob storage. Here you can read that the encryption scope enables you to manage encryption with a key that is scoped to a container or individual blob. And you can use the encryption scope to create secure boundaries between the data that resides in the same storage account but belongs to different consumers. And as always, links to all the documentation is right there in the description box. Moving on with the question number 113, the question says that you have an Azure Active Directory tenant named contosocloud.onmicrosoft.com. Now your company has a public DNS zone for contoso.com and you add the contoso.com as a custom domain name to your Azure AD. And then you need to ensure that the Azure can verify the domain name, which type of DNS record should you create. Your options are option A, MX, option B, NSEC, option C, PTR, and lastly option D, RRSIG. And the correct answer is option A, MX. And friends, this question, I have explained this question and a variation of this question in the question number 88 and 89 of part 12. So please do not miss to watch the part 12 for the complete understanding. But do not worry, I will give you some documentation in this episode as well. And here is the documentation. Here you can understand how to add your custom domain name to your tenant. So how to begin with, how to create your directory, add your custom domain name. So all the steps are given here. You can see add the custom domain. This is the first step. Then you can also understand what are the DNS record that you can select. Here you can see MX as we choose the correct answer as well. And you can also see the other variation, the TXT. And that's why I was saying to watch the previous part, part 12, to understand this TXT option as well. Now let's move on to the question number 114. The question says that you have an Azure subscription. Now the users access the resources in the subscription from either their home or from the customer sites. And when they're accessing from their home, the users establish a point to site VPN access to the Azure resources and the users on the customer sites access the Azure resources by using the site to site VPN. So these are very important terms to answer this question. And further ahead, the question says that you have a line of business app named app one that runs on the several Azure virtual machines. Now these virtual machines run on Windows Server 2016 and you need to ensure that the connection to the app one are spread across all the virtual machines. What are the two possible Azure services that you can use? Please note that each correct answer presents a complete solution and each correct selection is worth one point. And here, my friends, I just want to explain very quickly that how the scoring is done in AZ-104 or any other Azure exam. So here you can see that the question says that each correct selection is worth point. What does that mean? So let's say that this question is worth 10 points and you have to pick two correct options. In that case, each correct option is worth five points. So in case you pick one correct option, but then unfortunately you missed to pick the second correct option. In that case, you will be rewarded five points, which means you still get the partial score for picking one correct answer. Now let's read the options. The very first option is an internal load balancer. Option B, a public load balancer. Option C, an Azure content delivery network. And option D, traffic manager. And lastly, option E, an Azure application gateway. And the first correct answer is option A, an internal load balancer. And then the second correct answer is option E, an Azure application gateway. So let me give you the reasoning behind both the options. Firstly, an internal load balancer, I have already given you the logic that we are talking about point to site VPN and site to site VPN, both are internal. That's why internal load balancer. Now coming to Azure application gateway, why exactly is this needed? Well, because it provides load balancing in addition to routing and security functions. Now let's understand why other options are not needed. First coming to the public load balancer. Well, as I just mentioned in the question, it's very specifically called out that we are talking about point to site VPN or site to site VPN. Both are private. That's why public load balancer is not needed. 
And what about Azure Content Delivery Network? Well, Azure Content Delivery Network or better known as CDN does not provide a load balancing for any application. So it's not relevant for this situation. What about the Traffic Manager? Well, Traffic Manager is a DNS based solution to direct the user request to nearest instance and does not provide any load balancing functionality. That's why Azure Traffic Manager is also not the correct option. Question number 115. The question says that you create an Azure storage account named Storage One. Now you plan to create a file share named data1 and the users need to map a drive to the data file share from home computers that run on Windows 10. Now which outbound port should you open between the home computers and the data file share? Your options are option A 80, option B 443, option B 445 and lastly option D 3389. And the correct answer is option C 445. And just to give you a full picture of all the ports, here you can see that we have port 80, which is used with HTTP and this is for the web, but please note that HTTP is not the secure protocol. And in case secure protocol is your business need, in that case, you have to go with the port 443, which is used with HTTPS, which is the secure protocol. And of course, this is also used for the web. And then we have port 445, which is the answer of this question as well. So here you can see that this port is used with SMB protocol to share file. So always understand my friends, in case the question is asking for the data file share, in most cases, the answer will always be 445. And then we have 3389, which is a very famous remote desktop protocol, also known as RDP. So I hope you like the questions and gain some more understanding on Azure concepts. If yes, then please, please do like the video. And yes, please do not miss to watch the previous parts because I have covered many important Azure concepts and the questions in the previous parts. And not to forget to subscribe to the channel and press that bell icon to continue your learning on both Azure and AWS. And that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.